What is up and down? Oh, wow, great start. All right, <laughs> round two. What is up, down and sideways, all you fine feathered individuals? Welcome back to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties, for yet another LPL challenge of try not to be a banger series, and they have failed every single time in these playoffs. They just can't help themselves from going the distance, from bringing on the big speakers to play. Silver scrapes for a game five. NIP versus JDG. It's no different. And, you know, this first two games, very competitive. Honestly, there were angles where NIP was in control and it felt a bit tragic that they fell down 0-2 because it felt like they deserved at least one of those games. But they show some life. We'll go backwards and start with this fifth and decisive game. And I know people already upset with the pick ban here because you had Rookie picking up back-to-back MVPs on Talia, dominating. He was the playmaker for NIP, and then he gets stuck on Corky duty in Game 5. Some of that is because you had the Ari, Talia, LeBlanc, and Aurelian Soul. That's four mid lane bands going against Rookie, but he was even hovering the Diana, and I was excited about that. Wouldn't that have been something special? You can see the, 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 the bet on yourself with Diana coming out. I don't think would have maybe necessarily changed too many things given what was also handed over to the side of JDG. And that, sir, is world champion Zaya alongside one of the best Rakans in the world. Yeah, that's right. That's the duo, the lovers duo making their appearance in the bottom lane, getting that advantage in game five for ruler and missing of JDG. Yeah, and that was the big difference in this game because, listen, there were a lot of, honestly, pocket picks or comfort picks for both teams here. Shanji got rolling early on Rumble, which is a pick we've seen him pull out even when he wasn't meta. He got super ahead in that laning phase, but yeah. You throw 380 carry bands. You throw the Lucian, Callista, and Varus out the window. I would rather Ruler play any three of those than the Zaya because Photic got denied so much CS early on. I think at one point it was like 115 CS to 75 that Ruler was ahead. You pair that with the first real skirmish. Uh, between these two and it's ruler kind of finding a flank and taking Fotic out and absolutely obliterating him at one point He was three levels higher than Fotic. You never see 80 carries with that big a level gap I've had that my experience of that level gap in solo queue and let me tell you that is exactly a Miserable experience to go through on the other side of it uh, This was domination from ruler and missing in that bottom lane and the advantages that they secured you mentioned out those three ADC bands, yeah, absolutely. I'd rather than play any of those three because guess what? It doesn't have a world champion skin on any of those three. This is like that scene in Ratatouille where he gets the taste of the meal and it just brings him right back to his childhood. That's exactly what it feels like for Ruler when he locks in that Zaya. He gets teleported to being a world champion and he gets that level of confidence, that level of comfort. You add in the extra bonuses that that champion gets when Rakan gets paired alongside it, never to mention the type of comfort and skill that exists for missing on that Rakan engaged champion. This is a mega miss for me in that game five. Yes, there's avenues to talk about it. Uh, rookie with that pick for him, identifying that he was clearly the big and most impactful playmaker for ninjas in pajamas, but there is no excusing giving that over to Ruler and missing in game five. Especially when it's it's looking telegraphed. You see the Rakan is the first pick out of JDG. You even follow up with Vi for uh, NIP. What is the 180 carry that the Vi just press R doesn't work on? It's the Zaya, where you can just cancel it out with her ulti. Any of those other three that were banned, you can be countered pretty easily by the Vi. It's just, it was so easy, so automatic for JDG to pick that up. And it was one of those ones where it was just a formality from that point. The way they were able to execute in-game, the comfort that they had, that type of confidence, you can't give over to your opponent almost in any type of situation. 
but to do so in the decisive game of the series that you have clawed your way back into, it just feels so brutal. And truthfully, it was kind of a rough series throughout for Fotic, even in some of the games that NIP were winning. That game three and four where we looked on track for a reverse sweep, rookie, some of his best Talia performances in back-to-back -back games in three and four, and, uh, you know, Shanji had a, a tough mission, a tough purpose in this series with how many lane swaps were going on. Then he's pulling out a Nasus in this series, and that creativity is why I'm so sad to see NIP by him bowing out. Yeah, it is one of these ones where I think we've kind of done the full circle all the way around with NIP, whether they're the frauds or not in the LPL, whether they really are going to be one of these dark horse teams, then getting to the playoffs and having this run and really proving that, no, maybe not even dark horse, they could have had that real contenders label onto them all the way through this and what they're doing and then showing that creativity in this match with the NAS is what you've been seeing from them. The development that you could feel happen for the young players still on this roster alongside a veteran like Rookie. There was a lot of positive things that you could look at with NIP here. Ultimately comes to an end in this spring split at the hands of JD Gene, as you mentioned, with Fotic there. He's someone that has risen all the way up to play at that elite level that is necessary from an ADC in the LPL. Unfortunately, in this series, I think you got quite a uh, an example, quite a showcase right here, what the difference is between the elite elites like Ruler in the LPL and what Fodic was operating at on the day. And, you know, uh, especially the first two, or games one and three, I think, is when they actually did uh, some of these early lane swaps. Fotic on Jinx got so many plates, and NIP actually played, played it out pretty well. I'm so curious now, going forward, we've already seen G2 do it, is this going to actually be part of the meta where we're seeing some of these lane swaps to either avoid the double AD carry, a uh, hail of blade bot lanes that absolutely nobody wants to match up against, and at the same time, kind of maybe taking away a star top laner who's going to be starved for CS early on? Are other teams going to be doing this to close out playoffs? Maybe even at MSI? You better bet your bottom dollar that you're going to see a lot more squads. Try to experiment. Try to dibble dabble with a bit of this old technology going back in times to the lane swap meta. This absolutely is an answer to a lot of the things, a lot of the problems that a lot of teams are coming across. As you mentioned, where you can find these avenues, where you can punch back at other squads where you maybe won't have the opportunity to get any punches in if you play it standard type of situation. That is where I think you're finding these avenues and you're seeing it on Rift right near. Everyone's doing, of course, everyone's connected online, doing their VOD reviews, everything else. You're seeing it across the LAC. You're seeing it in the LPL. You're getting a dabble of it in the LCK as well. You better believe we're going to see this thing rear its head at MSI. Udyr, Scion, Orn, Tank, Rek'Sai, maybe even a Zac. All these picks doesn't really matter if they're star for CS for the first 5-10 minutes. Eventually, they're going to get a couple items and be unkillably tanky anyway. So yeah, it's definitely an added little caveat, an added little angle for teams to implement. And I mean, also part of it, NIP, you've seen Shanji jungling with Aki at points. Sometimes it didn't work out too well, these level 1 skirmishes. But it's another added flavor that teams are going to have to practice that they haven't practiced for years. It's just a, a, another wrinkle, another avenue that you can bring to the table in that preparation. That's one of the reasons why I think NIP was one of these teams that did attract some people. Some of that hype in the LPL this season was showing a little bit of that style, a little bit of that testing out the waters type of thing. It's going to end here in spring for them at this one, but this is the bounce back for JDG. And I thought, saw, I just, you know, kind of popped in my mind thinking of this one. Maybe, maybe. The excuse is that you feel like Ruler's not buying into Zaya at this point in the meta, which, I mean, she has been hovering around that just outside that ultra, ultra tier. So I don't know what you're really thinking that he would avoid it with. But that could have been the answer. That could be the only one that I'm thinking that you're saying, oh, right, he didn't play at all playoffs. Roll the dice that he doesn't pick it up here. But as you said, you already had it pretty laid out in draft. That was the path. Not a good choice. And... Now going forward for JDG, still feel like, I mean, it went five games. It wasn't the cleanest series out of them. Some definite issues to still 
shore up some of the team fighting not as crisp as we're accustomed to seeing out of the three-time defending LPL champs gonna play the loser of this TES BLG matchup obviously there's storylines of plenty for both of those matchups but regardless of who it is still feel like JDG will be the underdogs in either matchup which is what a sentence to say when you're talking about a team like JDG, even with the changes from last year's triumphant, you know, a golden road attempt, you go back and now what you have here and still calling them an underdog, but that is the situation when you're looking at the power of top esports and BLG. I think what you're looking at this one, even if you are trying to talk as much a hype up about JDG, you got to be hoping that whoever loses top esports BLG doesn't have that mental rebound, doesn't have that fortitude to go, okay, now we're gonna turn it on and we get right back into that finals type of situation. You better hope that they are a wounded opponent heading down to you in this situation. Otherwise, you are facing a steep challenge against these top squads. And a lot of that, I think, depends on how the series plays out, right? If one of them gets 3-0 stomped, is your confidence shattered or are you going into that loser's final and you're angry looking to take out that anger on somebody or if it's a five game incredibly close comes down to one team fight maybe you're feeling like oh man we're right there jdg shouldn't be a problem let's get that rematch right away or you're tilted out of your mind because you were one team fight away from being into finals and booking an msi ticket the way that things can play out one of the things that i am looking at this one no regardless of who gets sent down three six nine or bin take your choice flandre who you want to be going up against because that is going to be probably the biggest mismatch that you're facing is it good is it a twisted fate rexi two trick in that series two against those two i think you're gonna have to dial up a little bit more than just that if you're going up against the likes of three six nine and bin I think you would take Ruler in that situation if it is maybe the BLG bottom lane, even though they have been pretty strong all the way throughout this series. I think the only one that you could match up right now, given, of course, the, the big boost after this game five for the JDG bottom lane of Ruler and missing, would be Jackie Love and Mako. That would be the only one that would you would have that answer right now for who has been uh, as hot in these LPL playoffs. After all the chaos of these LPL playoffs so far, it is the top three seats that are left standing, one, <laughs> two, and three. And honestly, probably the best in terms of storylines, although I am a little bit sad that NIP's magical run does come to an end. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thanks for hanging out, as always, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.